The ballot is set for Election Day on November 5th, but you can vote much sooner than that. The first day of early voting is September 20th. Today's voter has to sort through more information than voters did in previous decades, and social media companies and websites have taken steps to crack down on voter misinformation. Shannon Slatton sat down with the executive director of the League of Women Voters Minnesota on why it's important to seek out trusted sources of information before you go vote. It's hard these days, right? There's so many pieces and places you can find information, but especially about our candidates, people really want to know what they stand for, who they are. So we really um, encourage people to look for those trusted sources of information. And those are, a lot of times, those are what are local to you or people who've been around a long time. You know, we've been around 104 years doing this uh, with our candidate information, candidate forums, things like your local, you know, cable station. Um, those are really good you know, um, sources to have right now to counter all the all the noise. And can you tell the folks watching at home just like the steps that you guys go through to make this as nonpartisan as possible? Right. You know, nonpartisan means not endorsing, you know, um, or opposing any candidate or party, which we which we are and have always been. And we go through many steps, and a lot of that is just the fairness, right? We invite every single candidate who's participating in a in a, an election to the forum at the same time in the same way. We present um, every you know all the same rules to everybody so that and we really are sensitive to not have gotcha questions right we're looking for things we take our questions from voters and we have people specially trained all of our foreign people are trained in moderating and question facilitation as well as event planning to make sure that everything is done in a nonpartisan way um, and I think that's what we take real pride in and it's not just about one issue um, it's about what are those things Things that really voters want to know in a way that's presented fairly to all candidates. All right. So, what are you guys working on right now before the election? So, we, of course, we had an election. We had sure. our primary election. We did have some uh, candidate forums for the primaries. Um, it was great to vote uh, on Tuesday. And um, but our big thing before the election is educating people too about all the new voter laws we have. You know, we have 32 new laws, uh, some historic new laws that really make voting easy for so many people, easier. I should say, especially like people for maybe English isn't their uh, main language. Um, we now have so many, there's like, you know, everything's going to be in 12 languages through the Secretary of State site. People can bring people to the polls with them, as many as they need to help them, you know, translate or make decisions about their elections, about the candidates. So. Um, our 16 and 17 year olds can now pre-register and we're working really hard around the state um, to get schools to sign up for National Voter Registration Day, a big event we're doing with Secretary Simon and both the Minnesota GOP and DFL. Because our young people, 18 to 24 years old, have been voting 20 points less than the average, but when they're registered to vote, they vote over 90%. And 16 and 17 year olds for the first time can pre-register to get engaged. So this is a really great time to invest in our young people and hope schools will sign on. So we're trying to do a lot of education. We've also been in a lot of prisons actually and transition fairs and things because the, uh, now people who are being released from prison have served their sentence are um, uh, leaving prison behind, maybe living in our communities and working, paying taxes, all those good things can now vote again once they are no longer incarcerated. So that affects about 55,000 uh, new voters. So we've been really doing a lot of education within the community about how people can vote. And then 300 forums across the state yes. that you guys are ah. working on as well. <laughs> right, That's a lot. Right. So much shout out today to all our local leagues. All our local leagues, we've got 35 across the state. They're all volunteers and so committed to this work to educate voters and um, have to do it in all different ways. You know, it's not just being in person, but also taping everything so that more people have access all the time. And yeah, in 2022, they did over 300 forums across the state. We did almost 100 even during the local elections last year. So we're expecting them again to be really out with those forums and hope our candidates will see, you know, that opportunity to communicate with the public. And the work does not begin with election day because then you work after the yes. election day to make sure everything was done correctly. Is that right? Right. And that's a big thing. This is really a new thing. I mean, it's not new. We've always had audits. Um, all of our elections are audited. People wonder about that um, through the what's called a post-election review. And so while 
while we all look at election day and say, who won? You know, there's sort of, that's the informal who won, right? But what happens is every, the canvassing boards in all the counties meet and they select a random set of precincts to hand audit. I mean, it is an audit. They'll, they'll go through and hand count um, all of the ballots to see if they line up with what the election night was. And what'll happen is sometimes they'll just be usually little errors. You know, sometimes a ballot would have folded or something like that, but it's never been enough to ever impact the results, you know, of an election to be so large a number. And so we participate in observing those post-election reviews. We've worked for years with um, Citizens for Election Integrity Minnesota, and now we're kind of taking on that bill of work. So we'll be out there observing that, talking with that. And those are all public, all over the, the again, after the election, the public is invited in all of their counties to attend the post-election review audit. Um, it's just people counting, sure. but then that information goes to the Canvas Board to certify the election and we know that there's there's people who are worried sometimes about the integrity of our election so I'm like go to those post-election reviews uh, become an election judge learn how the process works because there's so many safeguards built in that I wish the public knew more about absolutely and before we go because we're running out of time but where can voters go to get information about candidates you guys have a site. yes vote411.org is our big site for we do every single candidate down to soil and water board um, all of the information I've talked about too is e most easily gotten through our website at lwvmn.org but vote411 is our statewide fully nonpartisan fully bilingual candidate guide. Thank you very much for being here today yeah, Michelle Whitty, me on. Executive Director of League of Women Voters Minnesota. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Find more local news stories at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.